Hey YouTube, Sign here for another face off battle, this time putting our previous break queen versus our new break king in the battle for the ages, or maybe three weeks since, who knows, we might be back here again. But in our first premium 5 star versus 4 star character battle, let's see if Sway can keep up with our new hot rider. Just a few disclaimers before we get started. First off, this is not 100% fact on who is a better or worse character and simply just a fun test run to see them in similar situations. Secondly, this will be done on the creator experience server, so things are still subject to change, but if there are any, it should be very minor. Finally, for this video, you guys picked the character who went up against boot hell and I will be doing more polls in the future, so keep in mind to check the community tab and I do take suggestions should they gain a lot of up votes in the comments. But with that, let's go and take a look at our two fighters. Starting off with our current reigning champion Sway. Honestly speaking, building her from scratch was a headache since he wants so many stats almost similar to Boot Hill. It wasn't easy to build her, and I would say in some ways he was harder to build since he doesn't have the same flexibility and gear. But for her, we are a solid almost 2.1k attack, 112 speed with 63% critical rate and 142% critical damage and 193% break effect. This took a lot to reach these numbers, but she is very well built balance and our partners will be given the remaining break effect we need for the 240%. We'll be using indelible promise for our light cone since it was pretty much made for Sway in my opinion and for her traces and eidolons they will be maxed out since she is a 4 star let's not forget this important fact. On the other side we have our newest 5 star character Boot Hill who is looking to be a dominating force in the damage department but to make things fair I decided to try two different builds one's gonna be a semi free to play build which will be used in our first battle and I will go over it here and just before the second battle I will talk about the more premium second build. But for our first build we will have Boot Hill at a low 1.6k attack. 165 speed, 49% critical rate and 73% critical damage and 218% break effect. If you watch my break versus critical build, this is pretty much similar to the break build since I wanted to do something more free to play friendly to start things off. Our light cone will be sword play and traits will be maxed as well, but we will not be using any Eidolons. So for our battle locations, we will be first doing a battle against the second half of stage 11. For those who are wondering why I'm not doing stage 12, they are all physical weakness enemies and it will make it way too unfair of a battle in Boot Hill's favor, so to make it a bit more fair, I decided to avoid that stage. Also, I wanted to do one fight against quantum weakness enemies since it drastically affects Sway's performance and where she would usually be used. Our second battle will take place in the first half of stage 11, since I wanted a fight with zero weakness for either character. But now that the locations are mentioned, let's get to the fight. We start off with Sway because why not? And for the pre-battle preparations, I would say I do like Sway a bit more than Boot Hill since she is an active attack and it just works better for most team compositions. Now, when recording this run, I won't deny I found the first wave to be much harder than the second wave simply because of this damn annoying enemy not having any weakness to Quantum. Not to mention sometimes the debuffs will actually kill Sway E because of bad RNG. I decided to use Asta to try and focus on lowering his toughness bar just enough so that Sway E can break him and attempt to go for the kill with her ultimate and just kill the other enemy through adjacent damage. Sadly, we got extremely close to the zero cycle kill, but was just off by a small amount of damage which I would blame solely on substats alone. But let's go look at how Boot Hill will handle this side. When it comes to starting the round off, Boot Hill's team is at least able to make full use of everyone's technique since Asta is also an active, which gives him a slight advantage here. Since Boot Hill is single target, I decided to focus on the ice enemy first since I wanted to make use of his technique on the first cast of standoff. If I am being completely honest, Branya would make a much better partner for Boot Hill here than Sparkle and I only ran her due to wanting to keep teams the same but since my Boot Hill is faster than Sparkle, he doesn't get a back to back turn since her push is only 50%. 
in hindsight, after watching this, I believe it's possible I could have broken both enemies with extremely good RNG on Asta and using standoff right before the on the right side enemy when I did my ultimate. However, that would have taken a lot of luck and I didn't want to go for that. While I am not certain if that would have given me a zero cycle clear, it would have done more damage for sure, but both finished with a one cycle clear. Back to Swade's point of view, our dear friend here is about to meet his maker. Our rotation is going to be the exact same as we did in wave 1, just focusing on one enemy this time. Even though Swayi can hit multiple enemies, this is where she really shines in my opinion, and we make quick work of the first health bar. Even with my small mistake, kudos to you who noticed this, probably my favorite part about watching these videos back. Going into phase 2, the additional enemies he spawned actually just helped Swayi, so big mistake on his part. We get a follow up attack just before I can clear the mobs, so we miss some hits on the deer, but after a skill, he instantly gets deleted from our ultimate and follow up attack combo, closing this battle up at record speeds. As for Boot Hillside, let's see what happens. Luckily, I do have its ultimate, so we can instantly apply physical weakness and start trying to go for break as soon as possible. One thing I want to mention is fights like this really makes me wish the elemental weakness implant lasted for both phases. It's actually annoying that you have to keep reapplying it because the enemy clears their debuffs and they should be permanent or at least last as long as their duration lasts. But with that, we make quick work of phase 1 and while I like the extra enemies for Swayze's side, I am not so much of a fan of them here. Thanks to the memory effect, we are able to instantly apply elemental weakness again and instantly delete the deer in one shot. Man, both characters kind of just deleted it so fast. After requests on previous videos, I decided to include this small section here. So I will have all the damage recorded here for each character and broken down so you can see how much each character did respectively. Honestly speaking, Swayi was a tad bit harder in this fight because of the one physical enemy which cost me a few runs. Otherwise, it was roughly the same and as I've mentioned before, this was not Boot Hill's most optimal team and catered way more to Swayi. Starting off again with Swayi's side, we sub in Silverwolf, a character that I haven't used in such a long time. We want to apply Quantum Weakness as soon as possible so we can start breaking these enemies toughness bar and killing them quickly. I decided to focus on the T-Rex first since I was aiming to break both enemies at the same time, if possible using Swayi's follow-up attack and her ultimate in combination and he has more toughness to deal with. And much like the previous battle, we just barely don't get enough damage to finish both enemies off at the same time for the zero cycle clear sadly. But not too bad killing it on the first cycle I guess. Sucks, but not too bad when you consider not having any real weakness here. Looking at Boot Hill side, we have to get the elephant out of the room, his improved stats and gear. We now updated and included his light cone and was able to lower his speed so it's just one speed faster than Sparkle alongside increasing his critical stats drastically. Let's now see how this goes. I decided to do two runs on this side, one where I kept the team the exact same and included Silverwolf and then one I used the previous team but neither of these are his most optimal teams. Let's look at the Asta one. Once again, we start to focus on the enemy on the right side and try to delete her as fast as possible for additional stacks of trick shot. I apply weakness to the T-Rex the moment I get my ultimate since I expect her to die soon after I get my barrage off but get the dreaded 1%. I use standoff before using my ultimate so when I break with the ultimate I will gain one extra stack of trick shot and attempt to kill the T-Rex in one go but he is just way too tanky for me to finish it in one hit. Clearly this T-Rex is stronger than that damn deer. Now looking back at Sway's side. It's what I would have said if someone didn't die here and I said nah I ain't doing this anymore not playing this RNG game and called it quits here. Boot Hill was clearly going to dominate and it just felt bad at this point but Swayi gave it her all. 
But let's take a quick look at the round one numbers anyways, just to see how things went. We can see how fast Boot Hill's damage ramps up and it just blows Sway out of the water. And it's hard for her to compete, even with her hitting two targets at the same time. I would say the winner is Boot Hill. Even with unoptimal teams, he can still keep up with Sway E, no problem. And if I had ran his most optimal team, it would have been a lot less close, but that's where you guys come in. Let me know how you feel about team choices. Should I run only optimal teams, similar teams? Should I include healers or not? I want to read your feedback. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content later. I will see you on my next video, hopefully sooner rather than later.